So the, the title of the webinar is Staying Ahead of the Curve, Things to Know About Drupal in 2018. Um, we were founded in 1993. We work with you know people from startups to Fortune 100s. Um, we have an international presence and in offices in the US, um, London, Dublin, and then a bunch in Ireland as well. We're also a publicly listed company and have over 1,400 employees. Um, these are some of our, this is about our Drupal Center of Excellence. Um, so we have 13 years of experience in Drupal, over 400 large scale projects delivered, 200 experts and over 70 modules contributed and, ma and maintained, some are, of which have been uh, downloaded millions of times. Um, these are some of the clients that we currently work with. Not all of them are Drupal clients. Some of our highlights for Drupal clients is Pentant Media, Kaplan, Groupon, New York Daily News, and a few others. Um, some of these other brands we've worked with, with mobile development initiatives, um, integration work and things like that. Um, and then from here, these are our two speakers that are going to be uh, presenting today who are actually the experts. We have uh, Sushil Tripathi, who is our head of Drupal development, kind of our head of technology in general. Um, he has been working with Drupal pretty much since its inception, but really for 13 years, um, he leads a team of over 200 Drupal developers. Um, he, he pretty much has done it all. And then Amit is also our t is a digital transformation uh, evangelic evangelist, and um, he's just a really good technologist. He also kind of uh, merges the gap between business and technology, so um, he bridges that gap really well. Thanks, Brad, for introduction. A very warm welcome to all of you in the Drupal webinar series of Kelton Tech for 2018. I would like to like say that because we have witnessed a lot of like transformations in the technology in past three years uh drupal has also changed a lot and in next 45 minutes you are going to learn about things to know about drupal in 2018 and things that you need to care about so in our agenda today is first is the api first is strategy that is like people call it headless Drupal or decoupled CMS. Then uh, next, can you, uh, Brad, uh, can you hit next? Okay. So then second is the, uh, if you knew, know that the Drupal's admin panel and the editorial UI is not that much independent and that not that much intuitive. So how we can actually increase the admin editorial UI independence in 2018. Then preference of the use case specific distribution. That means how, how you can actually think of like choosing your uh, a right Drupal distribution for, for your use case. And then uh, uh, last not the least is actually it is one of the like major thing where the upgrade or migration from lower Drupal versions to Drupal 8. Okay, uh, next. Okay, so here are a few facts before I start like what is headless Drupal and how we, we, we need to do it. The, the fact is that headless CMSs are growing at more than 500% year on year. And that means the paradigm is shifting to more of the headless Drupal side or headless CMS side. And enterprises solutions are also moving beyond like simple CMSs to compete onto the marketing capabilities and the content as surveys, uh, where they, they want to be present on omni-channel, they want to funnel all those like clicks and everything into the analytics and all. And because of that, you, you need something that can actually serve all of those purposes uh, from a single platform. Next. Okay, so what it looks like. So if you see this vanilla Drupal, if you see on the left hand side, the vanilla Drupal is, is what? Uh, it is actually front-end UI and admin UI and the Drupal core uh, composed into one box. That means the uh, it is a monolithic design and that is 
our traditional Drupal that has been till now. Though people have been trying headless Drupal, we have also like done a lot of headless Drupal kind of thing using Drupal 6 and 7 also. Uh, but in, 2000, uh, in 2018, if you see, headless Drupal is going to be the, the, the most important like phenomena in, uh, in Drupal era. So if you see in the second transition where the admin UI and the core Drupal remains with 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 the the core system and then the ux and ui is actually separated from the the uh, drupal and now you you have the plenty of the options with the js frameworks like angular react view ember ionic meteor polymer whatever you name then there are a lot of if you see the system of engagements and the front end that means where you are going to engage with with the the systems are like growing every day so if you see we, we have actually like uh, categorized them in a js web apps and the device apps device apps can be anything it can be android ios windows phone it can be iot devices like raspberry pi even like link it, whatever. Then your set-top boxes, Alexa, Cortana, your Google Assistant, anything. So now if you see the delivery of the content is being done through multiple channels. And because of that, the this is called like headless where, where it does not have a specific front end with the tied with Drupal. It is actually you can say that it is outsourced to to uh, another entity that means that can actually do the front end and communicate through REST APIs. So the rightmost figure, if you say it is, it is not like much different, but it it it's showing it is showing a complex ecosystem where it is this cms is part of a complex ecosystem and is a small part of that actually that is where so suppose take an example of an insurance industry where you have multiple services multiple core services of the insurance industry where uh, be the uh, insurance premium calculator be be the verifier KYC verifying everything and be their CRM, but still you need a lot of content about your product, your services, customer care, a lot of things. And all that actually being orchestrated through an API gateway and exposed as REST API for the front end to be consumed. And once again, any type of front end can be consuming to all of these even uh, i have seen and implemented some of the like kiosk based systems like those are put in the malls and other places where people go and like just they can select their insurances or book the ticket for the movie and all that okay next Okay, so the drivers for the headless Drupal adoption. So, so the headless thing and the, this uh, this type of like uh, headless thing, or you can say service orientation, all of these things has been like from ages. There, there was nothing new. But in terms of Drupal, Drupal ha was never like supporting that headless movement like uh, more than like nowadays there still there were the services module those used to provide the services uh, after of certain content types or certain functionalities but now you you have a specific drupal uh, distributions those only uh, support uh, headless drupal so some of these like there can be more than like uh, many uh, uh, drivers but some of the drivers that I can 
say here as the fast changing ux requirements now if you see the ux requirements are changing very fast the technology is advancing very fast and because of that you need to change adapt to that and if you need to adapt to that you cannot be coupled if you are coupled then it is it is very difficult to uh, uh, dip, the deployment life cycle is going to be longer the development life cycle is going to be longer then if you see multi source content this is one of the like major driver where it is not only the cms because cms is part of a ecosystem where the content is coming from multiple sources and you need to uh, weave all the that content together to form a page in that case definitely you you need a, a, a headless kind of drupal once again omni channel user engagement and this is something like create once publish everywhere where you have a lot of smart devices even uh, tvs uh, news feed channels wires uh, even like value added services of the telecom providers where uh, uh, they post the content as a value added value added serv service to the remote areas where uh, there is no smart devices other than uh, they are having ussds and all that then style guide driven design which is like the prominent thing right now it is much easier for us to see the design first and then visualize what what we are actually going to get so earlier in drupal it was like very difficult because design had to had to be adjusted according to drupal otherwise a lot of work had to be done to to get it right because uh, drupal's html drupal's rendered html used to be definitely heavy on uh, html side and also messy then recent advancements in front end technologies actually made it uh, much more easier like angular react and all that if you see last 3 years a lot of front end technologies have evolved then i think of the microservices architecture yep i just i just want to add one point here for everyone that now we can see that user experience is something which is driving the user adoption everywhere so it is important that drupal also give some kind of flexibility to uh, the consumers that they can control the front end while the earlier version of drupal was putting a constraint on how you can design your front end drupal 8 or headless drupal basically gives that flexibility where you can control the user experience the way you want it to be yeah rightly said amit so the rise of the microservices architecture so for an architect point of view if you see that means when we we started with the monolithic then went to the service oriented architecture and now if you see this is the era of the microservices architecture where all the big systems are internet grade big systems are being built on microservices architecture and they are using whatever is good for what that means horses for courses and drupal is always has been a strong cms but it was not able to cope up with those like uh, microservices technologies uh, because of not having that headless option now it is the headless option that means the api is built into drupal 8 core itself next okay so if you see the advantages of the headless drupal so one is the decoupled interface definitely decoupled interface gives you a lot of independence as you can see the second one independent front end design so decoupling actually makes much more easier the development and deployment also much more easier and because they only need to honor the contract the communication contract between the the back end and the the front end then independent front end designs where you can design your uh, a front end based on your specific verticals and functions many times what happens the uh, a single uh, website needs 
more than 100 type of templates and it was like difficult in Drupal to make those number of templates it was a cumbersome job and those guys need to be the Drupal guys now you see tightened administrative security here the administrator login is not exposed to the to the end user and if handled properly it can sit behind a firewall and like just so admin act getting an admin access onto a, a, a headless drupal site will not be easy then content as a service this is something like uh, uh, you see if if you see most of the like uh, uh, some of the news agencies actually sell their content as service they don't have their own front ends and all that they only serve the content to uh, to to other other uh, news agencies or media or non media agencies where they they need it as a service and also a, a method to monitor them monetize them and all that and that can be easily done now then pipeline development definitely once again the same thing the front end and back end is separated that means the admin end is separated so whatever we are actually uh, working on the back end uh, does not affect the front end because we are not breaking the contract between the front end and the back end then ease of back end tuning definitely drupal updates enhancements and patches because if you are a drupal developer you must have seen that these are the nightmares for the drupalers where some drupal update comes and breaks your front end ui because of some javascript jquery update or breaks your uh, back end ux because of that javascript update and it used to be a chicken and egg problem now since we have decoupled it so you have complete control complete control and you can choose that way what need to enhance easily then easier resourcing definitely front end devs no, need not to be a drupal dev because now if you see front end engineers are like really that means that even that job is very hot in the market and you 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 can find out easily the front end developers those are not drupal developers and they don't need to be because drupal developers have to actually focus on the drupal side only and providing the web services to to the front end guys and well suited for the complex ecosystem definitely once again complex ecosystems means in e-commerce websites in insurance travel domain everywhere you need content you need your promotional content you 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 need your advertisements banners and all those things for that you don't need to have a microservice kind of thing running all those things but you need to have a, a, a i would say a microlith kind of thing that you have in the form of drupal where you are able to create that content and use it anywhere next okay but you know every good thing actually comes with like after some sacrifices also so if you are going with the headless drupal then definitely you lose the loss of contextual administration which was a, like a flagship feature of drupal 8 when it 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 was conceived and it was launched where in place editing layout designing previews and all that but I can assure you that already that there are projects running those are able to achieve these things in uh, headless manner also uh, with certain like they have like cut down certain features and they were able to achieve this also so it is not impossible and that is one trend like you can look forward in 2018 and I'm pretty sure we are uh, going to get these functionalities in headless also then need to maintain cms and front end separately definitely you have to maintain but if you are getting an agility of the team then it is actually not an harm it is it is actually much much better 
it is giving you the cleaner code, cleaner design. Need to be very careful for the search engine optimization. This is one of the questions that always comes into the mind of everybody where Drupal had a lot of like search engine uh, optimization uh, modules where you can plug in them and get a lot of like fantastic search engine optimization. Now you need to be a little bit careful that you your web services give all this that metadata to the front end where the front end guys need to be careful to render all that onto the pages accordingly. So this is definitely and not only that since you are using angular js react js and all that then you need to know that how to do a server side rendering using node.js or how you can do a pre-render of those pages using react then the most important thing is that my mindset changed for drupal developers because Earlier, Drupal developers, whatever they code, they were able to see it on the screen. Now they, they, they are coding for a web service. So whatever they are coding, they can only see as a JSON output. And that is it. sometimes like it is not like that much delighted. People don't get delighted to see because somebody else is working on, on the front end side and they will be only able to see it when those uh, things are ready okay next okay so before like we we go like how to decide what to do so being very honest this is from dries the founder of drupal who actually written a blog in early 2018, like saying how we can actually do the decoupling of Drupal and he put it very nicely. I've taken it from there, but because I, I thought it is like really good to be here. So what it says, if, if you want to build a multiple experience then you mostly you will go for a like fully decoupled headless Drupal kind of thing unless you 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 have a, a editorial requirement so any website which has which has more editorial control on the page manipulations, their, their uh, layouts and all, then there you, you, you will need like more of the either coupled or both editorial and developers need. If you need like all those front end technology and everything with along with the uh, editorial needs also then in that case you can go for a progressive decoupled website where you you have the initial rendering through drupal and use a javascript layer on the top of that to actually face the integrate the content repository that means there can be many modes of doing it uh, so Third one is the fully decoupled. That means where all the needs are, the developers need. Though I am not like very much convinced with the all the needs are developer needs only. It is it is actually that means what it means. It means like if you want to go for like a much better performance, much better flexibilities, and you are part of a complex ecosystem. There you, you can use Drupal as a repository and go for fully decoupled Drupal. That is fully headless Drupal. And you have three or four very good distribution of Drupal like Acquia Lighting with Lightning which, which has the uh, web 
as a coupled also and also has a service repository so using that you can create any of these but progressive decoupled you can use once again the aqua lighting lightning and water wheel sdk you can see water wheel sdk has been launched for like as a js and ios sdks are there you can use them to actually log into drupal do the crud and all that then fully decoupled i would prefer like to go with something like reservoir or contenta or headless lightning which are like specialized for the uh, headless drupal situations but you need to remember that the headless is not a silver bullet for everything you you need to choose it wisely what do you need and there is nothing right or wrong next please bread yeah so here what i am going to talk about where mostly that means most of us so how to increase admin editorial ui independence in 2018 uh, most of the if you see that means we all have worked with the drupal admin ui and if you actually show it to any customer the customer does not like it because it's not intuitive so for a drupal admin it is not intuitive it is outdated so editor says oh i am like it is very difficult to find what i want to do and for a drupal admin also it takes a lot of time to figure out a lot of clicks to do anything and if you see 57% of the web traffic was generated from handheld devices that means you need a lot of customizations a lot of things and here i am going to show you a sample for a for a uh, for a client where which is one of the like biggest media houses in, in india and they had more than 20 websites web properties running on mobile everywhere and this is what we have come up with like after three months sitting with their uh, editorial team we were able to find out that what would they exactly need and you can just like it is a short video and i'll be like uh, talking along that so please bear with me so if you see that means you can see story photograph videos breaking news category management user management then magazines everything here you can see a very advanced search of the content that is published or not and now you here you can see a quick file of the the system this is a quick file and the advanced file is like totally different so here if you see what we have put insert you can insert polls quizzes surveys expert chunks factoids then videos photos listicles photo gallery completely embedded and the mega reviews and there are some more plugins i mean these were the requirements they were always wanted to have something so you can see the templates for listicle factoid or buzz because they understand their lingo the editors actually have their own lingo and they want the system also have the same type of uh, uh, interface and talking into the same lingo so you can see this expert chunk now now for them editing it or filling it is much more easier and for for a rec on the record the stat says that when we actually did this so you can see the highlights then other configurations you can see where we are actually google stand out comment box whatever all that channels wherever you can post then schedule time 
then your SEO thing completely taken care of so a lot of things are there and you can do a web preview and mobile preview also you can see web preview and M preview and you can purge the Akamai cache Akamai is the CDN obviously used there you can purge the Akamai cache and now you, you see the, the this page where everything has been taken care of from that single screen they don't need to mess up around with the WSWG editor where they need to do the formatting and all that you can see uh, uh, this expert opinion coming in this manner you you can see this factoid coming like this you can see a poll also just below that where can India bounce back in Centurion after losing the first test versus South Africa so in the single story they, they, they want actually a lot of excitement where they want to put a lot of like photo galleries quizzes uh, mega reviews for the movies and all that and from the single screen they can do it so it is a glimpse of that system that system is huge that we have built it it has like every module is actually in itself a big project and it is completely made for their work style how their desk is managed how their people used to work and we studied that and then created it and this is what actually we need to implement in Drupal in 2018 where the editors have a really upper hand okay next okay so this one is like more of a, everybody knew know it like there are use case specific Drupal distributions those you can use and you can speed up your development and deployment because in the community there is a lot of work going on in the community for the specific use case based Drupal distributions and the good thing is that now enterprises are coming uh, like forefront I mean you can say that Pfizer is one of the like biggest uh, uh, contributor into the Drupal community because they have adopted it they have created their own distribution their own work and 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 now it is being used widely so similarly, uh, uh, Brad, can you go to next? So here I, I have given some samples. That means these are the random samples. Uh, Commerce Kickstart, everybody knows it. That means Commerce Guys has made it fantastic and it can be used to as a kickstart for, for any e-commerce, like a good e-commerce website you can actually build onto this where it can have a like enterprise grade security it can have all that uh, CMS capability also similarly GOV CMS that means this was a very popular CMS in uh, Drupal 7 and now has been ported in Drupal 8 also and is maintained by the Go Australian government department of finance and there are many more government and non uh, 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 non-government organizations non-profit organizations uh, uh, distributions those can be used thunder it is one of the most talked drupal distribution in professional publishing that is i think more than 200 websites are already running on to thunder distribution and uh, uh, it has great authoring experience that means you can go and just check it out where, where the best part what I have seen there you can do a paragraph wise editing and you can do the embed of multiple things into that paragraph it is similar to what I have actually shown to you guys but even much more e uh, simpler okay then Penopoly that means it has been a really very really very good distribution has been widely used in Drupal 7 also 
it is completely panel based distribution where you can do the design layouts and all that it is very good for people who actually don't want to do much of the coding kind of thing okay even i i, I talked about those uh content and reservoir those are actually more of the headless drupal kind of thing okay next okay now this is the last one that we are going to talk about the upgrade and migration from lower drupal version to drupal 8 uh this question is like every every time our clients used to ask to us uh, what to do whether to upgrade or rebuild so i thought like let let me like do something and find out what can we do with it so if your source version of drupal is less than six that means it is drupal 5 or i i don't think there would be any four but drupal 5 are still there so if they are then it is i would suggest don't go for anything else go and rebuild in drupal 8 and migrate your content into drupal 8 directly then if you have like 6.x or 7.x then you need to find out like one of those characteristics uh, that if you have a standard drupal installation very simple content types and taxonomy simple views no or little customization no patches to the core contrib modules core and contrib modules all compatible modules are available no plan for going with multiple experiences if you don't need it then just go and upgrade there is an upgrade path from these and that's really good that means you you can just go and upgrade it definitely you will have to test a lot to make sure that nothing breaks then if you have a standard Drupal installation all of this same things but like four to five kind of custom modules around one to seven patches to the core it depends on the size of the patches and how much you have passed and more than 80 percent compatible modules are available and you don't have a plan to go for multiple experiences then yes you can go for upgrade and enhance that means you go do an upgrade test it find out the faults whatever is remaining port it on to drupal 8 and then you are good to go the third is like where that means you have some of the specific drupal distribution that means once again those drupal distributions you have find out then drupal with more than seven core patches because mostly specific drupal distribution come with some of the their tailoring in the core also so definitely you will see some of the patches then complex content types and taxonomies where like your taxonomy structure is very complex you have plenty of the complex content types where it is having a lot of field sets a lot of like uh, ajax content and all that and then you have a complex views where a lot of alter codes alter queries are written custom queries are written and you have more than five custom modules that means you you might ask that how that magic number has come but it is like from my experience what i have seen that is manageable actually though if somebody ha have only one module but it is like uh, equivalent to more than five modules then <laughs> definitely that person has to need uh, have to write it once again then lots of patches to the core and contrib modules because any of the big system actually needs some of the patches in core and contrib modules then less than 80 percent compatible modules are available and you have the plans for going with multiple experiences and you want extensively modified admin interface then it is good and wise to go rebuild and migrate the content onto drupal 8 
Um, thank you all for your time. And uh, if any of you guys are going to be attending DrupalCon, please visit us at our booth, uh, number 726. And we'll be sending you guys a replay of the webinar plus a slide deck after this. Um, so keep your eyes open in your inbox for the next couple of days. Thanks. Bye.